this occasion is really to bring you up to date and to feel your questions because I'm sure there are a few questions uh, that you may have and those we intend to respond to and answer as uh, frankly and you know clearly as possible so at least it creates no ambiguity in terms of what we're doing so we're going to really discuss in some way the impact of the recent heavy rains, uh, systems that have been affected and uh, certainly without a doubt it would have been an anticipated that our storage would be impacted in some way and how do we ensure you know what are the systems in place to ensure that those systems are those storage continue to be replenished we look at in a very brief way possibly if, uh, some of the works that we're doing uh, there is an interest in terms of some of the recent emergency activities that would have occurred prior to the every rains of the last weekend and uh, something that may have been in, of interest to some persons is the uh, our COVID assistance program so just to let you know briefly and just to share with you I intend to use most of the time to field questions because I think that is one of the important thing of this uh, press briefing is to ensure that we give ample time to you who have joined us uh, so we can satisfy as much as possible uh, your concerns and the information that you seek uh, in helping us to disseminate across the wider Jamaica. So just to let you know we have a number of systems that were affected by the heavy rains. Uh, approximately 100 of our water supply systems were affected and they were affected in various ways. Uh, flooding uh, in, in some occasions, uh, blockages resulted in low pro production or no production. And of course, with the type of rains that we have experienced, we can't escape high turbidity uh, reaching our facilities. And those would have created um, ongoing uh, challenges and predominantly uh, the systems that are affected are those in some of our rural communities and mainly located in the eastern section of the island where we really saw a significant um, you know disruption to our effort to serve and to distribute water uh, just to let you know that we continue to, to work right around the, the corner in terms of, you know, right around the clock rather, to ensure that we bring those facilities uh, back into operation as quickly as possible. And again, where systems may not have been affected by any of the factors as I outlined earlier, uh, we did in fact experience disruption to some of our power supplies. And again, every wind's continuous rainfall are a recipe for that type of uh, disruption. We, in fact, ensure that we attend to those that are quick and, you know, we want to say low hanging fruit, if you will, in bringing back facilities as quickly as possible. Uh, so you would see most of the disruption that we had experienced in the corporate area have been addressed. Uh, places like Forest Hills, Juba Spring, Belmore, uh, and some of our rural systems are also back up in operation. Portland is another area that has actually experienced uh, serious disruption. We have been able to bring back our Charlestown facility. In St. Catherine, uh, while we had brought back uh, our Tullow Spring and Dintil facility, unfortunately Dintil uh, went back out uh, recently and so that would have been creating its challenges for, for, for some of the communities there about. Overall, we would have had impact of the heavy rain right across the island. No parish was, was spared. And so our effort really is to bring back those facilities uh, right across the island as quickly as possible. Because as you know, it is an expectation of our customers in time of rain. Nobody wants to hear about disruption. Everybody wants to have water in their in their tap. You would have been aware from earlier last week or the week before that we have been seeing and have you know resulted from the continuous 
rainfall, both our facilities are at maximum capacity, both Mona and the Hermitage Dam. And so right across the corporate area, we have lifted all restrictions, uh, notwithstanding there are occasions there might be some uh, disruption that could occur, whether it be as a result of uh, a number of leaks that we have seen popping up. And these leaks now are and some of our major transmission mains and therefore not just discrete communities would be affected but you know wider areas would have been affected we we we, we have seen that you know within especially on the western side of the corporate area uh, and some section in uh, on the eastern side so with the heavy rains as usual we are challenged by high turbidity increase in flow and I want to just pause a little bit because a lot of times it is not fully understood when we speak of siltation so if we don't take care of our watersheds the intake structure are susceptible or let's say very vulnerable to high siltation and what I'm showing on the screen is just a synopsis of what we would have experienced in the last few weeks I must say as it is right now our Yalas intake system is out and you're looking at upwards of 10 million gallons of water that we would normally take from that system and once the turbidity is of acceptable quality we send that straight onto our Mona treatment plant straight into the plant not even into the reservoir and so we will save on the volume in the reservoir but with the increased Siltation that we saw coming down the Yalas River, the entire intake is, 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 is blocked. And therefore, it's something that we have experienced just about four times in the last two months where we would have been, you know, cleaning that, um, that intake structure. Uh, again, this is a recipe, as I indicated, if we are not doing what it requires in our watershed, create its own challenges further downstream on our water supply infrastructure in addition to that i want to also raise a matter because for me i like to you know address the, the situations as they occur you would not believe that although we have seen heavy rainfall right across the island because of the prolonged drought and the, and the frequency of the drought especially for some systems in uh, St. Anne's and one in particular civil and its environment that system is yet to be seen an increase um, productive in flow that would result in uh, improved distribution in the Priory and SHA area and I, I particularly raise that because there is an there's an expectation at all times that once there is rainfall everything is back to normal the geology and, and how things work it is not like that it is as a result of how you know the underground uh, streams flow and there could be changes in those flows that could impact on how we our catchment if you will function and so sometimes it's not by virtue of NWC's NWC not wanting to provide and to distribute water but by virtue of what is happening at the intake structure that is existing it may mean that other investment would have to be made to ensure that we you know make adjustment to capture water if, the, if there's diversion in those um, underground flows but just to highlight that it is not uncommon after heavy rainfall for some time to pass before we see a return to our normal um, operation so we still have a number of systems that are out uh, as a result of the every rain right across St. Andrew, St. Thomas, St. Catherine, Clarendon, St. Anne, St. Mary. As I indicated, all systems were affected uh, by the, or let's say all parishes rather, were affected by the every rainfall. So prior to the rainfall of last weekend, there were a number of activities happening and I thought it is important to just bring focus to uh, what has happened on Arthur 
went drive a couple of weeks back, about two weeks ago. And it's really a manifestation of what I have always spoken about in terms of the age of our infrastructure. If we, and you know, just for the benefit of everyone, it is customary within a utility of our nature to replace just about two to five percent in value of your fixed asset on an annual basis. And it's really part of your renewal of your asset. Unfortunately for NWC, we have not been able to do that. And, and for years, this aged cast iron pipe has been one that is very vulnerable. Reliability is very low and its performance is also low. So it fits into the scheme of uh, replacement. So therefore, one of the things that we have to ensure is how do we renew these infrastructure? And luckily for us, we had start the planning process for that because that pipeline actually runs along the verges or just on the fringes of Arthur Wing Drive all the way to our Cavaliers or Morasco Road as you, you know it facility. And therefore, where we are in that process is we are in the procurement of the pipes and we are now moving to, to the procurement of the civil work for a civil works contractor to move that uh, process along. Uh, it is one of many pipes across the corporate area that requires to be um, replaced and so but we believe this is the most significant of the pipes to be replaced. You will also recall that we are also replacing the Spanish Town Road to Glenmuir Road uh, transmission main. That's about uh, 17 kilometers of pipeline and we are improving the distribution along that thoroughfare as well. While we would have been in the past laid a pipe and tap into the transmission, in this case we are ensuring that we had distribution system running parallel to that transmission and there's no need for any tapping because again once there's a leak on a, on, on, on a transmission or let's say the more you tap into a transmission the more likely it is it is to develop leaks we want to eliminate that altogether in, in in moving forward and that creates its own level of reliability for that system again while we always focus on our water infrastructure. I cannot ignore our wastewater infrastructure. And what you would have seen on the Washington Boulevard in recent times, and I must apologize to my uh, traveling public, but it is a necessary work that has to be done because of the danger that a sewer system poses to the motoring and the pedestrian public. And we're, what we're doing now is a replacement of a similar uh, type of infrastructure, old asbestos cement pipe that was used for uh, storage conveyance as well as uh, cast iron uh, pipes that, were, what, that was laid. Uh, just about when Duane Park and New Haven was established as housing communities or residential communities. And so those infrastructure are in need of replacement but not only that what we have also found in recent times whatever it is that is happening in some of those communities there are increasing flow of high toxic chemical that is increasingly degrading those pipe material much faster than what we would have um, anticipated and so by replacing with a pvc pipe we expect that those infrastructure would last for another 50 years or, or more uh, and so this is part of one of the upgrading exercises. it is not acceptable for any community to be inundated anytime whatsoever with, with with sewage and so nwc is making the effort to ensure that we replace those infrastructure and we're talking about investment of over a hundred million dollars just to do those uh, work all together uh, so again we would have done quite a number of
projects across NWC um, and we're talking about board water and wastewater projects and these are outside of even our collaborative effort with uh, the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation under the uh, Major Infrastructure Development Program. Uh, what we're looking at is how do we extend our footprint in providing water supply to rural Jamaica and recently for those who would have been monitoring the media we are just at the point of completing our Wakefield to Ponca sale in Chilani water supply system and this you're talking about improving uh, water supply to these communities from the Wakefield uh, system so we are not just only focusing on corporate area and the urban centers you talk about St. Elizabeth that we are now well, we just completed that program as well to improve our water supply system in the Hanslow Williamsfield um, area. And we are now moving to ensure that we can improve water supply going down into Treasure Beach. Uh, those procurement activities have commenced. We would have done the middle quarters from Loana, and we are extending that system all the way out to Allen uh, because of uh, we were. You know some communities and some customers who have not been served probably never been served we're extending that system to ensure that those communities can can benefit we continue to do the improvement work and uh, in a uh, close to the finalization of the black river uh, 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 project which really is a replacement of an age old uh, pipeline that serves uh, the township of black river and so that is part of our effort to ensure that we bring reliability and improve service to those to those communities we are again non prel down in close to Nigril. uh orange jail retirement area is another project that we are completing mason river is going through up in the clarendon kelly's area is going through the testing phase and so we continue to work on our agualta veil system where we are reorganizing that overall infrastructure in 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 St. Mary as well as to ensure that we improve water going up into Highgate, Richmond and those communities and in addition to Anata Bay as well. So there are a number of activities which we are pursuing and continue to pursue. We recently completed uh, water supply up in Mocha, an area that would have not seen uh, pipe water for, for, for some time or ever, really. Uh, when the last time I, I heard it was uh, close to 50 years that people have not seen water in their pipe. That's, you know, my lifetime, really. We, again, NWC's portfolio is, is both water and sewage, and but we oftentimes focus heavily on our water supply side but the the environmental uh, stewardship that is required to ensure that we have a safe environment does mandate equal interest and equal activities in delivering uh improved sewage service to, to to those communities and so we are at the ending phase if you will of the of a crew which is really a mixed financing arrangement between a multilateral uh, including IDB and NWC through a loan from the private sector as part of a pilot in how we ensure that there's financing to deal with uh, sewage services and so those activities are coming to an end what we will see is a reduction in the number of sewage treatment plants across uh, Kingston in general we are taking out the UNDEN facility, that's the one along Mullines Road going up into, uh, going up that, that side, going north. And we're also taking out Bay Farm uh, Villa. We would have taken out Acadia some time ago. For those who know where Acadia is, right at the intersection, Acadia uh, Drive and Barbican Road. We would have taken out uh, one up in further in up at Standpipe, close to that area. Uh, Ravina, uh, that's one of the location, and so the idea is to bring a uniform sewage services across the corporate area and a more centralized service across the corporate area. And with that, you would have also seen outside of 
the MIDP project is an extension of our sewage collection system and all that sewage is going uh, to, to Soapberry uh, over across the, the, the causeway, well, causeway to St. Catherine. So there have been quite a number of activities and we have a large suite of projects to, to complete, both in terms of new well source development as well as service extension across uh, various rural rural communities. Uh, as you know, with COVID comes the need to be agile and NWC in the process had offered you know customers the opportunity to bring their arrears if you will uh, up to up to book or you know uh, current uh, during a four month period we would have offered upward well 30 percent uh, in, in for, for residential customers as a means of a give back really to customers and for one month we would have offered a 25 percent to our commercial customers uh, as usual our Customers are always not wanting to take up the opportunity as quickly as we are as we would have expected, considering the circumstances that they face. And so that program uh, come to an end at the 31st of August. And it is unlikely that we would be restarting that program or extending that further. Again, one of the things that I want to emphasize to you uh, the media and those who are you know interested like all businesses is businesses in Jamaica the NWC was not spared from the impact of COVID and our effort to provide an assistance comes at an expense to the National Water Commission with COVID we saw a, at least a reduction in our large commercial customer uh, usage and for one period, our revenue would have dropped as much as 40%, meaning our cash flow similarly dropped by that um, amount. So you can imagine going through a drought, a COVID, and a need for increased delivery of water, which in our case at the time, it would have been through trucking. So my trucking bill went through the roof, and my revenue is going south and therefore it is unquestionable that we have been impacted negatively by by covid over the period for the eight eight month period starting march up to the end of october we would have lost in cash flow upwards of two billion dollars uh in our revenue so you would have understand how the literacy that is in terms of our, our our operation and therefore while we were conscientious in providing that support to customers we have to take stock of how we remain viable considering that it is unlikely that we could run to the government to seek a continuous support under the basis that government itself is inundated by various other demands and so we have to make adjustment in how we move forward and therefore that program came to an end and so we are now looking to ensure that our cash flow return as closely as possible to where it was knowing very well that that is in itself a challenge because of the wider economic uh, impact uh, that we are currently experiencing in addition to that we have also take a look and made adjustment in how we treat with customers who may face with high billing and those high billing are usually and i will just share with you a little statistics you know just to engage in our conversation i'm sure is 90 percent of my customers who complain of high consumption for one month or the other is usually as a result of leaks 
But oftentimes what you find, my customers tend to think the first place is there's something wrong with the meter. And invariably that is not the case. So what my customers do is um, complain about the meter and ignore checking their on-site plumbing infrastructure. I have a simple suggestion. In the same way we, and this is just, it comes natural. In the same way we as a motoring public would ensure that every three months, every four months, we check our motor vehicle, we change our oil, we do all of these things. I am encouraging our customers to check on their plumbing infrastructure on site regularly because not all leaks are going to be visible. And in some instances, because of the number of persons that may be living on uh, in a premises, you ignore these dripping pipes, you ignore the slow leaking toilets, you ignore, you know, these little small things. These small things adds up. And a lesson to learn, the longer the leak remain unattended, the worse it becomes. And therefore, I'm encouraging everyone to pay keen attention to the situation because NWC has to look within its own business model and make a decision as to whether it is something we can continue to give concession on. You already know we have a huge challenge with our distribution by virtue of what we produce and distribute. Every gallon of water that I give a concession on adds to my inefficiency. And therefore, if we are working to improve an organization as NWC to be more efficient, we have to put the responsibility where it rightfully is. And therefore, I'm encouraging our customers to pay keen attention to those circumstances on premises that result in high consumption. As I said, 90% of those situations are as a result of leaks on premises, whether they are visible or invisible. But nonetheless, it's a leak after the meter on, 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 on your premises. So I just raise that as a point that I wish to, to share. Uh, you would have seen via the slide what our what, our imp what the impact of the assistance program that we would have, uh, what revenue we would have gotten. And it may look small, but it was critical at the time because this was really in the middle of the pandemic and it did serve a significant uh, purpose. We would have liked to see more persons accept the, 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 the concession. And I just want to point out, um, ladies and gentlemen, that what we found is that most of those who take up the offer are usually the customers who would pay their bills normally. So there is a myth to think that it is those who always don't pay bill who get these um, concessions. It is not correct. The majority of those customers who accepted the offer are those who would pay their bill anyway but found themselves in such um, difficult circumstances. Finally, NWC is moving to digital. And I want to uh, emphasize that while we transition into that realm, we are ensuring that we offer almost all our services online. We, are, we have started a process that we are reviewing what we, are, what we, what we uh, have done. And we want to ensure that we cater for those who are the tech savvy. But I'm sure you will ask me, what about those customers in rural Jamaica that don't have internet? We still will offer those persons same service if they come to our offices. But we want to reduce that number of transactions that is a walk into a commercial office and allow those to be done online. I mean, when you go online, ladies and gentlemen, you're the first in line. There's nobody is before you. So we want you to utilize those channels because 
we see it is more cost effective. It is, uh, it is safe. We have ensured that, that, that those features are taken into consideration. And for sure, we are endeavoring to improve on these initiatives. While they were already in the pipeline pre-COVID, COVID just allow us to accelerate their implementation uh, going forward. Again, I want to say we rather you pay online and my PR team has been very much aggressive in promoting our IP portal. Uh, I, I know it is very easy to, to, to maneuver and to utilize and so we want to encourage our customers to use these channels we continue to accept your complaints on all our social media channels. And one of the things that I will encourage our customers to do, rather than make a phone call, we have the web chat. It goes up until 9 p.m. daily. And therefore, it is an easy way to bring your concern. But for sure, our social media channels are up and running and it's live. It's monitored and you'll get responses quite quickly. And we want customers to utilize those as means of speaking to us, letting us know what your issues are and we will address them uh, accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I've said a mouthful and I will ask Andrew to monitor. Probably I will... I uh, do that myself if if possible and I hope I can answer as much of your questions uh, as possible. I want to thank you. All right, well there you have it. Um, quite a mouthful from the president of the NWC, Mr. Mark Barnett, outlining the raft of um, challenges that we have been having with respect to the rains, but also highlighting how we have been dealing with those challenges. And of course, it was highlighted the COVID assistance program where we did reach out to the vulnerable persons just to give them a concession because we know that these are challenging times. And of course, the works of the NWC continue to bring water to every nook and cranny of Jamaica. And of course, we are improving our sewage services as well. So with that being said, the floor is now open for questions from members of the media. Um, those questions will be directed to the president. And of course, and social media as well. We are streaming live on Facebook. So persons who are, who are on Facebook, you can send in your questions. So now the questions will not be directed to the president. We are being assisted very ably by Ms. Trisha Jones from our IT department, who is going to help us with this coordination as well. So ladies and gentlemen of the press, the floor is yours. Good morning. I on well, I must admit I have to agree with the president about the issues because I do get all the complaints. Now, my understanding is that with the new digital meter, one is able to ascertain when there's an issue here at home. Can you explain to us how are you going to have a sort of education program to sensitize persons how to move that meter? Thanks, Sir David. Yes, the, the digital meter do comes with a feature that helps to detect leak on premises. And one other thing, and I think what we need to do, as you suggested, is how do we disseminate the knowledge, if you will, so that customers can help themselves. And I think that that could be something that we have a tutorial on and, and probably make that available through our social media uh, channels. So we disseminate that in a very short video, which makes it easier. Uh, so yes, it does allow for customers to uh, know when there's a leak. In fact, some of the complaints that we would have received, we would have gone, bring our computers and location and do what we call a data pull of the meter, which allows us to review consumption pattern per hour if that is the setting that is there. And in some instances, we go down as low as every 15 minutes to make a, and that tells us what is happening on, on those premises. Okay, Mr. Darby, you have another question? Uh, yes, I have another one. 
um, sealing non-pavement of water. And we have sort of nice terms. We call it non-technical or whatever. And it says that, uh, now, it seems to me that we require decisions from higher. I know we have made decisions we need to deal with it. Mark will be a social problem. But I have already suggested that what we can do, we can start off with a particular fund and say, start charging a basis of mm -hmm. The living process is after five years or so, you would have to pay the full cost. Because listeners and um, persons are very upset that they have to be paid for water stolen by others. And if they don't pay, the water is disconnected immediately. What plans? Yeah, we have the government has any plans to deal decisively with the stealing of water, especially in areas where sometimes the whole area nobody goes for. Good question. Vernon, one of the things that we have been embarking on in our effort right across the corporate area is to identify, and we have done that really through our NRW program now, is a program to identify what we call social water, meaning, as you indicated, water that would have been taken by those customers or those consumers rather and not been paid for and that is going to be the basis on which we lobby uh, government to make those budgetary allocation to cover those because it is unlikely that those persons are going to uh, be paid but what we are now doing is to capture the fulsomeness of the data because what we recognize is that there will be the need to identify families if it is going to be directed to you know those um, those areas and so the detail would be would be required to make those uh, policy decisions at the highest level. But we are endeavoring to provide those information and we are well away well down the way with that uh, right now. Uh, if, if if you hold on Trisha, there was a question from Prince Moore. Uh, how has COVID-19 pandemic impact NWC's revenue collection and the company's overall operation? Uh, Prince, you probably missed what I said earlier. It has had a devastating impact on us. Uh, just to highlight that at one point our, 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 our revenue had dropped because again the commercial customers were, well, commercial entities were close if you will for, for a greater part and the tourism sector which also still reeling would have had an impact on, on us so we, we we had seen upwards of 30 uh, percent reduction in, in our revenue uh, right now if we look at a a simple matrix that we use internal internally of nwc is so the billing that I will do for say October is what I will be collected in in November, and so when I looked at my bill revenue in in October, and just using this as an example, by the way, not the real number, and then the collection uh, in say in November, uh, probably in November we don't reach there yet, but just as an example, we would have seen if we do a comparison of where we were uh, prior to COVID, and um, and, and present, we are seeing upwards of 10 uh, to 20 percent uh, reduction initially. That has subsequently improved, but not improved to pre COVID levels uh, at all. Right now, our collection level is over in just about uh, 78 80 percent uh, on, a, on, a, on a given month, so, and, and that is incredibly low uh, to, to operate our business. And, and to address all the all the all the operational uh, requirements, it therefore it therefore give you a sense of how we can address some of the challenges and even some of the demands that customers would be would be requiring in a timely manner. Because water utility, like all other utilities that exist, are highly capital. And require high working capital to ensure that you keep operations operations going. All right. 
All right, we have a question, sir, from Hot Max of Soli. He wants to know, sir, when will Harborview community be getting back our water in our pipes? Good question. For, for those who are not aware, the transmission main between the western side, meaning before the Jai Harbor Bridge, uh, going on the eastern side of Harborview, was dislocated as a result of the heavy rains. We are working to have a temporary fix, but we have to now do a permanent arrangement of relocating that, that pipe. So the idea is to repair what, ex what is there now, but we know very well that that pipe needs to be relocated. Um, and so the relocation is anticipated to be completed somewhere about the 10th of November, but we want to have the repairs done uh, more than likely by the end of this weekend there or so. So that is the, the, the challenge that we have on the uh, western side of, of, of Arborview going all the way out to uh, beyond Arborview, really, going eastward. There is a question while the team from, I think it's Tana Thomas from Nationwide, has there been any further fall in the consumption of non-revenue water in the corporate area last year? In September, it was down from 60 to 36 percent. So that's one question. And again, you followed up with, since the OER has standardized customer satisfaction for the NWC, how does the company plan to improve its call center standard? The OER and NWC didn't measure all the, the OER said the NWC didn't measure all the established standard uh, or key performance indicators that assesses customer satisfaction. I think we have consistently measured all the, all the, all the, what we may not have done is to meet all the, all the standards, but they are measured. And one of, the, one of the things that we have made a policy decision is to have a different type of arrangement for a contact center, and it is going to be highly technology driven. And so we are now in the process of testing that technology for rollout and we expect that to be rolled out uh, on or about the second week of November and at that time we intend to invite you again the press to see our contact center what it will look like how it will operate and in addition to that I will also raise this to you as well because the contact center is one part we will have a monitoring um, operation as well that monitor what's happening on our network and at some of our facilities that we have invested technology so that they can be remotely monitored meaning i can tell you when a facility is down and i can also detect when a when the pressure in a, in a section of a system is down or when the pressure is too high that could create a leak so we are slowly it is slow yes but we are making the improvement to ensure that we can deliver on this type of service, the type of responsiveness that you require. And so while this starts in the corporate area, we intend to roll that out, um, roll that out uh, over the entire, entire island. And it is really part of the effort to improve responsiveness and at the same time improve uh, the satisfaction that customers get and I must I um, emphasize while we are not perfect and we currently have a survey going I'm going to encourage you to participate because those participation for us it is it going to mean how we move forward to improve the services that you demand and all the rest of things that is required of the NWC but we want to hear from you. We don't want to just go and say, oh, this is what the customer, we want you to tell us. And then we can rank them, prioritize them, cost them, and roll them out uh, for improvement. That is the type of uh, situation. The question relating to non-revenue water. Non-revenue water, uh, uh, between the period that you will recognize we have a drought, non, and normally when you have a drought, uh, your non-revenue water is going to be also positively impacted as well and so now that we're back to normal and repressurize the system it may see a little increase but once we start to control back those pressures within the network which we are now doing you will start to see that reduction again it is a cyclic and uh, operation it's not as linear movement as it would be expected the business of 
hydraulic uh, monitoring management of a network is not as straightforward as it is oftentimes think it is but it, it you know I, I don't want to to bore you with all of that technical jargon but we can have that conversation where I help to disseminate some of in a very simplified way some of the technical um, terminology and approaches in, that we employ in, in making things uh, happen and to, to, for the improvement right across the network and as you mentioned that I must also say Portmore we're coming uh, beginning of November a similar program has been rolled out in, in, in Portmore the entire Portmore from the Cayman Islands intersection all the way to Elsha All right, we have some questions here from Mr. Anthony Log of TBJ. He wants to know, wants sir, to know, sir, how will the dip in the revenue affect the NWC time while all these repairs, repairs and, he and he also wants to know, wants to know can, he please can you please say, say how, much how, much how many customers, how many customers are currently with all the Okay, let me attend. Let me address the first question first. So. Like all businesses, once your revenue and your cash flow from your customers drop, it affects how your creditors are managed. Meaning, those regular accounts payables requirements are also affected, and so you will find it takes a long. Uh, it will create delays in getting certain things done. Not necessarily in terms of pipe repairs. We we have prioritized those as part of our strategy to ensure that we respond to those ones that we know where they are within the shortest uh, and the target that we set within 24 to 48 hours and so in most instances we're doing much better than that but there's obviously going to be a situation where for reasons one reason or the other because of where the leak is the the, the area that is going to be affected we may delay a leak repair uh, because of those circumstances but for sure, a reduce a reduction in my operating revenue is definitely uh, definitely has a negative effect on my operational expense side by virtue of how I carry out not just leak repairs. It has to do with everything else. It has to do with uh, purchasing power. It has to do with uh, how do you tend to things which are relevant to the enterprise but has no direct impact on uh, water going through a pipe. The, the, the question as it relates to how many customers are without water, predominantly in our rural communities, the, 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 the customer base is much smaller. You'll, you'll, be, you'll appreciate that uh, most of our customers, probably 85% of our customer base, really situates in, in, in the urban centers and so you will have while the systems are important to those customers the numbers that are affected would be very 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 low but one of the things that we have also ensured to do is to ensure that we has to continue to do some chucking for some of those communities and i will tell you chucking is not cheap it's expensive and you can understand how the dynamics work, low revenue, increased chucking, system out, need to put back. You have two costs, but one revenue, which is, decline, which is declining. And at the same time, in some instances, we're doing uh, some regulation where the systems are very close to each other. And we can make that um, adjustment to alleviate those circumstances. The, the example that was raised as it relates to the dislocation across the Dry Harbor River, out in Harbor View, that in itself is a complete severance and the only solution for that is to get the pipe back in, in, in operation. There's no substitute other than to, to, to chop water, which we really don't really want to start rather than, we will do that in the interim, but not for a prolonged period of time. Any other question? Social media. Anyone from the audience? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I can't be that good by answering all the questions. <laughs> All right, uh, members of the media, uh, any other questions at this time? Um, um, so, um, so, so, I, I, so I just want to share with you, with you because, you know, because for us at NWC, one of the things is, and, and I will emphasize this, our effort is to be as forthright, let you know, so we, we, we indulge sometimes your patience. And, you know, COVID is in Jamaica, and COVID numbers have increased. And as I've said, we are not immune to that reality. And while NWC itself has, has its own um, cases, what we have done is to manage those within the, within the context of the Ministry of Health guideline. We seek and encourage your patience because, you know, sometimes these occurrences create their own anxiety for our own staff. We have to manage those situations and invariably it does create delays in how we respond to some of your concerns in the field. So we just want to emphasize that as part of what we have to be managing. Uh, I think we would have done a very good job internally in, in ensuring that we maintain operations. We continue to monitor our entire staff complement, which is over 2,000. And we have seen, you know, very much positive response from, from our staff in, in general in how we, how we handle this situation within, within the enterprise itself. So, you know, just to emphasize um, that, that NWC is not immune one way or the other from what is happening in the wider, wider society as well. Um, my, my final statement is going to be on the COVID or the CAP assistance program. So I am starting and ending on, on CAP. And so for those of our customers who would have granted and who were granted payment arrangement by, by taking up the offer, uh, the final date for those payments to be made is tomorrow, October. No, no November. Oh, sorry, November 30th. So just to remind our customers who we would have offered, they would have accepted the 25%, but for one re reason or the other, wouldn't be able to pay the balance all in full. We offer, in most instances, a three-month payment arrangement that comes to an end on the 30th of, of November. So um, again, it is really difficult for NWC, and so we have to be mindful that in all that we wish to do in supporting our customers, ensuring that they are managing during the pandemic period, we also have to look within our own operation and see, can we manage going forward and are we vulnerable, uh, are even more vulnerable in not providing the service. And so we want to ensure that we can still provide the service to you, really, water supply in your pipe, collect your sewage and reduce overflow uh, where they occur as much as possible or, or at, um, reduce them all, all together. And so in doing that, it really requires a particular level of cash flow um, regularly. And so we have to be minded in that context and therefore, you know, giving back, giving back is not going to be a activity that we can sustain in perpetuity and therefore we have no choice but to encourage our customers instead of buying two more phone credit um, phone credit um, just pay a little on your water bill that is more significant to your well-being your health especially during this time of covid and so help us to even help you better and that is be a responsible citizen and pay your water bill, please. I thank you.